Hi guys. I hope you're all doing great. So I'm back with another book review. Before I start, I do ask for your patience and your respect as I know I'm going to stutter through this whole review. So please respect that. And plus I like to talk with my hands from time to time because I feel like it does help me speed up whatever it is I'm trying to say. So if you don't like it, um, sorry, but this is what I do to try to cope with, um, with my stutter. So this book was released back on November 22nd, uh, 2021. This is The Clash of the Nannies, Turf Wars number five, or book number five by Bella Jewel. Let me say this, you guys. I purchased this book when the day that it came out, and I just finished the book just like last night. And because uh, what happened was, I had so many uh, books at the time that I was reading, but I just did not want to miss out on the opportunity to actually purchase this book. So I'm happy that I got it. I'm happy that I read it. Um, I love the writing style of Bella Jewel. She has such a wicked, sassy twist to her writing, and I just, I love it. I love every, every word that I read out of her books. Um, and so with that being said, I am going to go ahead and read the blurb of Clash of the Nannies, and, and then I will give my full review of this book. A nanny is what I am. I'm a good one too. When I'm hired by a biker and his rich woman, I can't say no. I can't afford to say no. I've never worked for a biker before, and I certainly haven't worked for one who is this damn moody. And did I mention, oh so gorgeous? Still, here I am. I need the money. I need to escape my past. I need to escape, I need something, anything, to make the demons go away. What I didn't sign up for was the rich <clears throat> he decided to reproduce with. Not only does she hate me, but she's from the most wealthy family in town. My days are now filled with country clubs, galas, dressing a baby in clothes I could never afford in my lifetime. Did I mention the other nannies? The stuck up ones? The ones who hate me? Yes, there's them. Lucky for me, I have him. A connection that's undeniable, only he's everything I shouldn't want. A biker? Bad news. I'm their nanny, even worse. Yet their relationship is toxic. A one night stand gone wrong. An attempt to make things right for a baby he didn't know he even wanted. I'm not in the position to be in the middle of that. Yet there's something there. Something between us that's undeniable. This isn't going to end well. Okay, so Maggie's a nanny who is hired by Hugh, the biker, uh, to take care of his baby named Starla whom he had with Delilah, who is the, who is a rich snob, basically. Maggie is friends with Gabby, and Gabby is with one of the bikers named Remy, so there's that connection. Um, Maggie is so sweet to Starla, she nicknames her Star, and she takes her, and she just takes care of her so well, and, you know, she isn't afraid to tell Hugh when he is being insensitive and a jerk or anything like that like he, she's basically become like a voice of reason uh for him and even for delilah 
And, you know, it, like, and she isn't afraid to put Delilah, like, in her place when she gets all, Oh, I'm rich. I have rich friends. <laughs> and and just reminds her that uh, she is human. Um, when when Maggie meets the nannies of Delilah's rich friends, who do have kids, uh, that's when <laughs> okay, and that's when it starts to get like really good in this book. Um, these nannies are really like hardcore mean girl bullies. They seem to love to remind Maggie that she has no money, that she's poor. They basically make her feel like she's a charity case or something like that. And the uh, and the nannies do everything they can just to almost as if you know, to make her feel like she needs to quit or just to uh, stop coming around uh, them during uh, Delilah's like t get togethers or something with her friends. So you know they prank her, they trip her, uh, they put and push Maggie to retaliate. Which she does and thanks to the help of Eve, Ramona, Pop Poppy, uh, Gabby and our lovely friend Doris, they do come up with uh, certain things to get back at these nannies for. But then the nannies turn back and start doing more to them. And there's one prank in there that just makes me go like, oh yeah, that's a good one. But then there's this other scene where I'm so proud of Maggie for just standing up for herself that, um, she knows that as soon as this last encounter that she has with with the nannies who just ends up just getting into her face or saying just these horrible things she just snaps and that's probably one of my favorite moments that Maggie has is just to like <laughs> she basically gets this adrenaline adrenaline rush and she just says okay I've had enough of these rude bullies and I love what happens afterwards so I mean I couldn't be more thrilled about that but there's a lot of danger that um, hangs out uh, that you know is around Delilah's family uh, mostly whenever they go to the country club and uh, the country club just has like a whole bunch of, uh, of illegal, disgusting, horrible things that happen. And Delilah, as far as she knows, she didn't know anything about it. She does find out the hard way. So, and uh, on the upside, we all need a friend like Doris. I have never been so happy to read whatever it is that Doris says. She is just a hilarious character. She can be the uh, she could be nurturing like a mom, or she could be just their cheerleader to make them do the right thing. But she could also be a voice of reason too. And you know. If you already have a friend like Doris, give him or her a big hug and feel thankful for them in your life because just, I loved this character. She just, she made my heart happy every single time that I've read any page or chapter that she was in. Okay guys, that's it for me today. I will see you in the next video. Alright, bye guys.